Morning everybody, Rusty from the Rusty Razor. Got another shave of the day and today we're going to be using Sterling's Orange Chill. Yep, it's got glacial, glacial orange chill and smells like oranges. So, nice day. All right. And then we're going to be using the fourth use of the Astro Blades with the Mercor 34C. Air condition just kicked on. Yeah, it's only 100 degrees. What the heck, you know? 100 degrees Fahrenheit. What's another toasty day? And then we're going to be following up with some Pharaoh's Dreamsicle. Slowly going down. All right. So how's your day going? Obviously, it's warm here. Yeah. It's like step outside. Hey, it's an oven out here, man. It's like, uh, just followed the instructions the other day how to uh, turn your mailbox into an easy bake oven. Yeah. How to cook lasagna in the mailbox. So, there you go. Am I joking or am I not? <laughs> yeah, it's a, a bit toasty. But hey, it's Iowa. It's summer. It's pretty normal. It's like every year when uh, roughly sometime June, July, it always never fails. It's like temperature will go up. That's just the way it goes anticipating we've had a really nice uh spring or you know until recently and summer hit and then the temperature went to this the roof but you know it is what it is except the only problem we got in Iowa right now is uh flooding um minnesota iowa Dakotas, Nebraska. It's like the way the weather pattern is set up with the jet stream the way it is. It's just like we're getting train going on right now. We're the weather pattern is is that constantly all the storms are rolling through the same exact area. It seemed like practically every day. And we're we're supposed to get weather tonight. More storms. Get more rain. Here in central Iowa, it's not so bad. But up in the north part of the state, northwest side, they got flooding big time. We're talking any town that's along a river is underwater. Like, we always equate look at it all right well how well bad was it in the flood of 93 what were the water levels and it's higher and like we thought 93 was bad this is this year in some of those areas it's like really flooding bad and this entire area that's flooding right now is where the headwaters feed into the raccoon and des moines river which meet right here in des moines And confluence of it, which is Confluence Brewing, is a brewery named after because it's the confluence of the Raccoon and Des Moines River. And if all the headwaters are, you know, slowly watching the water levels as it's creeping this direction, it's not like instantly. It's like the water goes up and then. Until it gets here, and then it's only going to get compounded if uh, get these storms rolling through. So, and normally, usually I see flooding in the early spring. It's like when all the snow melts, and you get. Uh, the storms hit well this year we didn't have hardly any snow because we'd been in drought condition drought conditions are no more now we got the opposite effect which is all due to a jet stream yeah like all these idiots are rather like it's global warming it's terrible we're gonna all die no it's just the weather pattern changing 
You guys gotten used to being under a drought. Now that's changed. Oh, speaking of weather, yeah, the Greenfield tornado that hit back in, uh, see, the Greenfield one was that, we got the, the tornado that hit here two blocks away was, I think, the 26th of April. I think it was the same same storm system at all oh, the same time. But they clocked, and then I've done all their investigation and everything, and the Greenfield tornado that basically removed this town from the map and went right down the middle of the, the town and just obliterated it. And it had record setting winds over 300 and something mile an hour. And the, the worst thing is it wasn't a single tornado. It was like four or five tornadoes like spinning together in a dance of death. And Reed Timmer, R-E-E-D-T-I-M-M-E-R. Yeah, he's got a YouTube channel. He's a storm chaser and he was the one that filmed the, this effect that was going on. So it was pretty bad how it went through and just obliterated. It was like cars, all there was left was just the frame, it just disassembled vehicles and ripped them to pieces, houses were gone. They were finding people's um, houses, goods and personal effects with their names and stuff on it hundreds of miles away because it just sucked everything up, lifted it up in the atmosphere and carried it away. And the weather was going from southwest to south northeast. Anybody that was in the path northeast of where the city get hammered were finding stuff in their yards and stuff of homes that were just totally obliterated. Right down to the foundation and he's like you see on social media like, oh it's all this global warming no it's spring in Iowa it's like we get tornadoes every year sometimes we get occasionally we get a big one big ass one that will just destroy stuff and that's normal uh that 10 15 years ago we had uh one in iowa that hit a small town up uh north central iowa and it literally uh obliterated it just like this one like an ef4 ef5 went right through it i think it was an ef5 that went right through the middle of the town and just gone. It was toast. And just like us, uh, watching, seeing the results of it hit uh, over here. And little town next to us, Pleasant Hill. We, uh, every time I drive through, there's still homes that all you know, the windows are all boarded up and roofs are covered with uh, tarps and stuff because still waiting, probably insurance to get off their ass and fix things. And so they're using tarps on their roofs to keep the water damage to a minimum which is ridiculous they have to deal with that you'd think that insurance companies would get their off their ass and get us get in there and help people but no you know i'm just glad that it was for us it was just being without power for a while because all the power lines were ripped to pieces you know they got those fixed so we got power 
poor individuals, you know, that, you know, had their homes tore up. And that was just, I think, an EF-1 that hit. That was a small one. But the path destruction went from roughly two blocks south of me all the way through uh, Pleasant Hill. So it was not good. I had a friend of mine, the, the torrent, he lives on the uh, east side of uh, Pleasant Hill. And he just recently moved to Illinois, his, his family farm. Parents retired and he took over the farm, so he sold his house and moved back to Illinois. I would never live in Illinois personally, but, you know, to each of their own. But, yeah, the uh, uh, two houses away from him, it's like, he lives on, here's his house, and there's a street and then a house, and uh, the two houses away, they got damaged, it was, but it lifted up enough that you know, only the tops of the trees in his yard were damaged. No damage to his property. Trees can grow back. That's no big deal. You know, they may get some damage. It's like when the derecho hit us four years ago. All the, half the trees in the, behind me on the other side in the backyard got ripped to pieces. Snapped off. <laughs> crushed my shed. The winds tore up the siding on the side of my house. So that's how I ended up with new siding, new windows. It was, money went towards that. They were said that, like my ham radio outfit, you know, the antenna got tore to pieces. And it's like, oh, we'll give you some money for that. And replace your antenna and replace your fence, your shed. So... And they gave us some money for tree removal, which I did myself. <laughs> so I took all the money and threw it towards siding, windows. Yeah, we were supposed to have gotten the, the, the fence replaced, but I had enough fence sections because the fence used to go along my driveway between my neighbors and I tore it out. and. So I had all those fencing sections left over. So I just repaired everything myself. Kept the money. Then uh, next door neighbors, they asked me, the new neighbors that moved in after, because the previous neighbors, they wouldn't, and I asked them, I was like, can I go in there and trim those trees or cut them up? You know, because they're it's like, nope, you can't come to my yard. I'm like, okay. Got all these widow makers hanging over in my yard. And got the new neighbors moved in a year later and they was like came over and go, Can we do something about those trees? And I was like, Yes, please. I've tried, you know, like I said, I've been trying to get my new, the previous owners to do something and, or have me just do it and they wouldn't do it. And, and was, can we go into your yard? Because they're a Hispanic family. Like, can we come into your yard and Working said, Yeah, I have no problem. Was like, if the trees are coming down, I'm happy. And when they dropped the trees, they tore my fence up and they go, Well, we can replace that or we can put a new fence in. And I was like, Hey, you're going to put a new fence in. Just it's like the fence, I put the fence up on my side of the property line so the uh, utility access could go through there. And I showed them where the utilities went through, and they go, oh, okay. So they put the fence on their side of the property, on, so there's a gap between our property lines so the utility lines can go through with no problem. So now my, it's like the grapes I had on my fence, they, uh, <laughs> they're going hog wild now because they're getting sunlight from both sides. <laughs> Because it was a big, tall uh, wood fence. But I up. The south side of the fence is still there. But, yeah. You know. 
I still got some of the old fencing left. A lot of it, when they tore it down, my old fence, they tore it down for me and stacked it up and took it to the dump. I'm like, hey, you guys want to do that? That's fine. I don't have a problem. And they always invite us over. It's like they'll get a little festive days, you know, they'll do a barbecue or something. They'll invite us over. Kind of cool. They only have a few. Few of the individuals can speak English, everybody else is, just speaks Spanish, but. You know, one of the English, he has some property. He's right outside of town, he's got a small little acreage and he's like, hey, can I get some of those grapes? Like that. He wants cuttings off the grapes. But he can grow some. I think we're about done. I'm like a little orange in the day. Make me happy. Yeah, I love the slickness of the sterling. That is good stuff. Yeah, we're done. Alright. Ah, that blade's done too. Started getting a little tuggy at the end there. Make sure you don't have soap behind your ears. Nothing worse than going through the day and like, what's behind your ears? Uh, I don't know. Hey, All right. A little bit of Pharaoh's dream sickle. One of these days, I keep saying it. That was tight. I wasn't open. Yeah. Smell like an orange Julius. There we go. A little stinging right here. Ah, uh, smells good though. Oh, there's an affiliate link down below. Uh, this recently Chuck said he got some stuff from my affiliate link. I think I'm close to $25 now. What's in there? So we definitely got enough to do a. Uh, uh, giveaway for 20 25 to um, Razor Company. So if you want to get something from the Razor Company, use the affiliate link. A little bit kicks back, which I'll use for giveaways. I did get myself pretty. And not really good. It's just a little nick there. Not bad. All right, so that's the shave of the day, everybody. Brought to you by Awesomeness called Sterling Orange Chill. Got a little bit of cooling going on and it feels good. I like it. Yeah. So, orange chill. Then we had the fourth and last use of the Astra blades, greens with the Murcore 34C. Great combination. Always works good for me. So, that's the shave day, everybody. Hope you guys like it. Like and subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one. Rusty out.